Hi everyone, Lewis from Skullbusters and sorry about the wait, I've had a small personal matter to be dealing with. Anyway, let's get back to it. So, Le Mans 700 was one of the most requested tunes to see what the, well, what the best 700pp car was. Uh, and it is still the Aston Martin VGT. Now, I've tested out the Audi Quattro, the Nissan Skyline with the engine swap, the RX-7 with the engine swap. All three of them, they're, they're dead. I need to figure them out. I'm adding too much weight or they've not got enough power and they're just not quick enough. So, I need to figure them out to bring them back down to a reasonable level where they can do lap times comparable to this, but nothing at this moment in time comes close. This car will belt a lap out in 3 minutes 43 on fuel map 1. If you do fuel map 1, you're talking 3 laps. And if you do fuel map 4, 5, one of them, it's one of them. You can get 4 laps out of it, maybe 5 if you're lucky. And yeah, so you're looking at a 2 pit stop, 1 pit stop race. Very, very good car. So, let's get into it. Let me show you the tune and then leave the ECU as a hundred have ballast set to 10 kilos at minus 32 position and then the power restrictor have that set to 100 and then the only other thing you need to change is the front rear brake balance and I've got that set to two you could have it set to three and um, it just depends how twitchy your back end is under braking so if you're on two and you hit the brakes and the back end starts to slide out switch it to three it might stop that but that's it easiest tune you'll ever do you can't modify anything else because it's a VGT which is a shame because if you could modify the suspension I reckon you could make this a really really good car but such is life on Gran Turismo you can't do that for the others right show you the lap there you go, funnily enough, the brake balance is set to 3. So, coming up to the final corner here, just making sure that we get a good exit. Again, I've not stressed this enough in previous videos, use the manual gearbox for this car. So important. So, just going to give it a bit slight touch of the brakes as we come through that first corner. Slowing right down to 60 miles an hour for the chicane. Under the Dunlop Bridge, just keeping an eye on the back end there, just likes to step out. Hugging the uh, curbs around the chicane and then hitting heavy on the brakes, letting it roll around the corner so you don't get much understeer off the power, and then back on the power through and hit on the curb there. Slight so touch on the brakes, power it as you get through the apex, and then you're on the straight. Again, six and a half thousand revs, that is the peak point to be changing gear. For some reason, this car has a ridiculous power curve, it just drops off. Uh, and that's probably why it's so lowly rated by the PP system. But if you do that, you you smoke the competition. So I'll break in just before the 200 mark, letting it roll round the corner as you get through the chicane, and then on the power as you come out. Coming up to the second chicane, you can break after the 100, uh, 200 meter mark. That is, again, when you're coming through, staying light on those brakes, not just jerking off because that's what really kicks the car out now after this update now we're on to the last section of the Molzan straight we're going to want to be careful at the bottom of this uh, when you get to the corner you're going to have to brake heavy but not make too much movement on the steering so if you do if you have got quite a jerk going on just let off the power a bit find it easier to brake before the apex of the corner and then as you get to the corner just let it roll round if possible hitting the apex on the inside as soon as you do get on the power and just floor it all the way uh, down to Indianapolis and then for this one we're going to slightly break as you get to Indianapolis turn in and then hit the brakes again just to maintain stability because it is difficult now there you go brakes and brakes again nice turn in and then powering on the way out bit of, bit of back back end uh, flicking out there but it's no problem 
coming up to the Porsche curves. This is probably where you could gain some lap time on me. I, I, for whatever reason, I could not master this first corner. So I'd bring it into the left hand side, hit the brakes, and then slowly bring it round. But you can see there, I'm going far too slow for the corner. I could be going much faster. But the best thing to do here is just to keep on the throttle as much as you can. If you're not got, if you're getting a bit too much understeer, just back off the throttle, and the car will come correct itself. Slow down for the last curve, and then you're flooring it to the last section. Flooring it round the white mansion area, taking it right down to the chicane, hitting the brakes, 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 and then as you get into the chicane, late roll bit of accelerator and then slow right down for the final chicane and that will take you the line for a 343 look at that nothing comes close at the moment so when it does I'll let you know but until then this is the absolute best car to be using it's good on fuel it's quick it's easy to drive the only drawback being you've got to use it in manual but to be fair it's probably the best car you can use to get used to using the manual and it is such a big benefit particularly now you're getting a lot more oversteer in the group 3 cars on the online races on the daily races gives you more control over the car much more so yeah there you have it folks smashes the competition still the best car until next time adios